Hi, and welcome to another DevNet Innovations video. I have with me John McLeod, who's been doing some very interesting and engaging work for his participants at his DevNet Express events. And, and John, if you'd like to take us through some of the challenge, what you ran into, and what you guys did to solve it. Yeah, so um, really what we had was, we, uh, we had an event uh, which was called, uh, we call it Cisco Training Days, right? Where we had all the customers in our area in San Francisco to come into the office and do, you know, we'll open up all the dCloud labs to them so they can come in, hang out all day, very lightweight event, you know, do dCloud labs. Um, we did our first event and really what we noticed was, you know, we had paper, you know, sort of menus where, so no URLs, not even a dashboard. And uh, that became a little bit difficult to manage and it wasn't a great customer experience. So they walk in and there's a sheet of paper on the desk that gives them their information that they need for the event, right? Yeah. So, so that being said, I know that you've done some excellent work with the APIs and automating it to improve that experience. Can you kind of take me through what the experience looks like for your participants? You know, when does it start and kind of walk me through the journey that they have? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, a lot of the experience actually starts before the customer actually comes into our event. So, you know, a lot of the things we picked up from DevNet, because we ran the first DevNet Express event in uh, San Francisco, and so, you know, one of the things we noticed was Eventbrite. We're like, wow, so Eventbrite's really great. It's a very easy registration. And uh, Eventbrite also has an API. So as you register, we're getting that data, we're pulling that into Spark through the Eventbrite API so we know who's registered, we know all those people. And then what we also did was we created our own API. And we used that what's called the mean stack, which is MongoDB and some Node.js involved. We wanted to learn that. And uh, so we developed that. And it, what it allowed us to do was, it allowed us to give the customer not only a digitized version of the lab menu, but it allowed us to, you know, when we look at, at you know, APIs and things like that, we said, well, the API needs to come first. Let's make the API visible data of the customer activity, what they're doing, what they want to do, and then let's put that into a nice dashboard for them to use. Gotcha. So, 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 so it starts with this dashboard, right? And you said you get their registration data. So somebody's going to come to your event, they start there, you, you're pulling in that data, I believe into a bot, right? And, and you can use that bot to kind of manage your event before it even gets started, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we pull it into our bot, it allows other people, account managers, et cetera, their customers to see who's coming, because that always, was always the thing, who's registered, who's registered, now it's self-service, which makes it really easy. So what's next? So they've registered and you've pulled in their data and so you're, you're already kind of digitizing your audience. You know who's coming, you can manage that better, but tell me what's the next thing for the participants? When they come to your events, wh what do they see? What does it look like? So they walk in the door and uh, we pretty much have just a couple iPads there with the Eventbrite check-in app, they check in. Uh, immediately we get an API call to Spark, also to our application, so the customer immediately sees, you know, we see they're checked in, and you know, their lab menu and their lab information is populated, ready to go, and then we use CMX to get them on Wi-Fi, because we want them to use social networking or you know, all those different types of you know, SMS means to get on the Wi-Fi network, and we don't want that to be a barrier. And so next, we redirect them right to the menu, they're logged in, they're ready to go, and all the labs are available, they're just checking boxes and picking the labs that they want to they go into, and all the information is exposed. Excellent, so, you, so you've kind of onboarded them into your event, everything is, you don't have the paper anymore, right? No paper. Okay, so they come in and they're onboarded, they're ready to go and sit down and do labs. What's next? Uh, so after that, we really try and make it as visual as possible. So we've got dashboards up showing how many labs are being done. And then not only that, but you know, so we took some home automation and some IoT and we brought it in because we wanted to show people other APIs. So Philips Hue lights, you know, you can get them at Home Depot. Um, yeah, they change colors. Yeah, change colors and control them through APIs. So we actually discovered that the Hue lights have APIs. And so we said, you know, let's look at, you know, Let's look at taking how many labs are being done. So we got lights, we put them up at the front of the room, enterprise networking, security, uh, data center collab, DevNet as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially we said, well based on how many labs, we made it a challenge. We said, let's progress these lights. You know, redder the better, right? Let's make those lights nice and hot and red. More labs are being done. We want to progress that light all the way to red is the, is the goal based on how many labs. Well, that's fantastic. So as they sit down and as they're doing those architectures, whether it be collab data center, if there's more people doing collab or doing DevNet labs, then that light goes from a cool color to red to hot so that you, you can kind of see visually in the room what people are working on and what's trending. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of customers wanted to do a lot more labs and it really got the engagement level up. Um, and then on top of that, we also had API enabled coffee makers. Uh, we had to order these from the UK um, to, get them to, to get them to work. Um, and really we wanted to do, number one, just go into Spark if you want to brew yourself a cup of coffee, choose the strength, the machine grinds the beans on top so it's fully automated, which is great. 
Um, and then we also did a little scenario where we took a, a, a network outage and we turned that into a, okay, the network outage happened, let's brew the coffee because we're going to have a long night. <laughs> I love it. Well, well, thank you, John. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. For all of you, if you'd like to learn more about this solution, you can check out the URL at the bottom of the video. Thanks for joining us.